Welcome to Prejame Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 61 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about how to detect if cookies are enabled or disabled on a client computer. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 58, 59 and 60 of this video series. In fact, this is a very common interview question. How do you detect if cookies are enabled or disabled on the client's computer. Now I have seen most of the articles on the internet states that we can use request.browser.cookies property. Request.browser.cookies property returns a true or a false. Now on, on most of the internet article sites I have seen um, it says if request.browser.cookies then cookies enabled otherwise cookies disabled this is completely wrong request.browser.cookies property determines if the browser has the capability of supporting cookies it doesn't really tell us whether if the cookies are enabled or disabled so this property should actually be used to check the browser capability not if the user has enabled or disabled cookies Okay, so we have a different approach to ch detect if cookies are enabled or disabled. But this property request.browser.cookies is only used to detect if cookies are, uh, you know, supported by that browser or not. Okay, so most modern browsers actually support cookies, irrespective of whether the cookies are enabled or disabled. Uh, if the browser supports cookies, request.browser.cookie property always returns true. Okay, now. Let's look at how do we actually detect if cookies are enabled or disabled on the client computer. Okay, in the previous session of this video series, we have discussed the basics of cookies, like how to write a cookie onto the client computer, uh, you know, with name and email values uh, that the user types into these text boxes, and we have seen how to retrieve those values on web form too. Okay, so obviously, if you look at the code in the button click event, we are creating creating an HTTP cookie object, and we are storing name and email keys. And then we are setting an expires property. And then we are adding the cookie to the response object. And finally, redirecting to Web Form 2. On Web Form 2, we are retrieving that cookie and then retrieving the value out of the name, uh, key, and email key and displaying in the label controls. OK, now let us see how do we actually detect if the browser supports cookies or not. The first thing here to understand is users can disable cookies in their browser. And how can they do that? They can actually go to Settings internet options click on the privacy tab click on the advanced tab now if you look at this you can choose how cookies are handled in the internet zone so the changes that I'm going to do here um, will only affect internet zone so I click override automatic cookie handling and I'm going to block the first party and third party cookies I click OK I click OK. Now this only blocks the cookies that are returned uh, by the internet applications. Uh, but then uh, here when I locally run my application it's going to run under local intranet zone so the cookies are not really disabled. For me to disable cookies on my local computer when for local host then I can use developer tools of Internet Explorer. Uh, you can press F12 for that or you can go to tools and then select developer tools the shortcut case F12 and from the developer tools cache and disable cookies at the moment it is disabled because unless and until I navigate to that local host site I wouldn't be able to disable so let's do that now okay so now let me run this application as it stands so as soon as the web form loads we'll be able to enter uh, some values here and look at that I'm going to disable cookies I disable I'm disabling cookies I'm going to type in test and test email and look at that go to web form 2 and look at that it's not showing me the cookie values why because the cookies are disabled so my site is not functioning if cookies are disabled so I want to detect on the client computer if cookies are enabled or disabled now if you look at this as I told you most of the internet sites say you know you can use request objects dot browser property dot cookies so this is a boolean property and if you look at what uh, you know the IntelliSense says gets a value indicating whether the browser supports uh, cookies so it's only telling you the capability of the browser not really if the user has enabled or disabled the cookies now let's quickly test that so I'm gonna say response dot write maybe a message cookies enabled if that's what is true so if you remember we have actually disabled cookies on 
this local computer so I'm gonna say cookies disabled here okay so now let me run this and look at this in spite of having cookies disabled on my client browser when the page loads it actually says cookies enable because request.browser.cookies property will always return true because Internet Explorer 9 supports cookies okay now so the next question is how do we actually detect if cookies are enabled or disabled on a client browser now to do that we have to write a test cookie redirect the user to the same page read from the test cookie if cookie is present cookies are enabled otherwise cookies are disabled that's the only way to figure out uh, if cookies are enabled or disabled and let's write code for that okay so if request.browser.cookies that means we know that cookies are supported by the client browser on the other hand you know if that property returns false then we know that you know the user might be using a very old browser that doesn't support cookies in which case we want to print a message to the screen so let me add a label control to this project okay so let's add a label control and let's give that label a meaningful name so I'm going to call that LBL message. Let's get rid of the text. And I'm going to set the full color to red. And maybe font hyphen bold. Is equal to true. OK. Alright, so now let's go to the code behind file and then we'll say label message dot text just to save some time in typing. I have this message already typed. So let me copy and paste that message. Uh, your browser doesn't support cookies. So the message is your browser doesn't support cookies. Please install one of the modern browsers that support cookies. Okay. On the other hand, if the cookie, uh, if the browsers support cookies, then we want to detect, you know, if cookies are enabled or disabled. So how do I do that? The first step is to create a test cookie and redirect the user to the same page. So how do we create a cookie? We have seen that in the previous session. We can make use of the HTTP cookie class. So HTTP cookie, cookie is equal to new HTTP cookie. And I'm going to give this cookie a name. We can give it any name. I'm going to call this test cookie. And then I'm going to give it a value of one. Okay, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to write this to the client's browser. So response.cookies.add and we are going to add that cookie object. Okay, so we added the cookie to the client browser. Now I have to redirect the user to the same page and read that cookie. So I'm going to say response.redirect. So I'm going to redirect the user. So this is a little trick actually. So I'm going to redirect the user to the same page, webform1.aspx. So let's copy the name of the web form. And then I'm going to pass in a query string. I'll tell you why we are doing this. And then I'm going to say check cookie. You can give it again any query string you want. So I happen to choose check cookie. I'm going to pass it a value of one. Okay. So what did we do until now? If the browser support cookies, create a test cookie and then add it to the client's computer and redirect the user to the same page. So he's going to land again on the same page. And I want to do all this only when the web form first loads. That's when I want to detect if, you know, the cookies support is enabled or disabled. So if not is post back. So do this only during the initial get request of the web form. Okay. So when the web form reloads, you know, after this redirect web uh, statement, it's going to reload. And then what I basically want to do here is f request dot query string of, you know, this is the trick. This is what we need to understand here carefully. So if request dot query string of check cookie is equal to null. So what does this tell us? This means that we haven't returned the cookie yet. So, I mean, if we have returned the test cookie to the client computer, we are redirecting the user using this query string. So if this query string is present in the browser vendor, then we know that we have returned the test cookie and we are trying to read the test cookie. On the other hand, if this query string parameter is not present, then we know that the user has landed on this web form for the first time and we want to write the test cookie. Okay, so if it is equal to null, we'll write the test cookie, add it to the client's browser and redirect. 
Otherwise, if the query string is present, then we know that we have added the test cookie. So now, what we want to do, we want to try and read the test cookie. So how do we read the cookies? We use the request object. So request.cookies of, what is the name of the cookie that we added? Test cookie. So I'm going to pass the name of the cookie here. And that's going to return the cookie object. So HTTP cookie, I'm going to call that again cookie. Now, if that cookie object is null, then we know for sure cookies are disabled on the client computer because I just re have returned a cookie, but I'm not able to find it there, which means cookie, I mean, I, I'm not successful in writing the cookie. And when will I not be successful in writing a cookie? When the cookies are disabled. So obviously now I want to show a message to the user saying that cookies are disabled. Again, I have that message already typed. So let me copy and paste that message there. So the message says we have detected that the cookies are disabled on your browser. Please enable cookies. Okay, so let's run this as it stands now. So look at this, as soon as I run it, you know, the first time when the page loads, it checks, okay, this browser, it's IE9, so it supports cookies, and it checks request.query string the first time, uh, you know, the query string uh, check cookie will definitely be null, so it comes into this if block, creates this HTTP cookie, adds the test cookie to the client's browser, and then redirect the user to the same page again. So it again comes, and then it comes inside request.browser.cookies. Now the query string is present, so it comes to the cells part. It will try to read the cookie, and if you remember, we have already disabled cookies uh, in the browser, so this cookie will be null, and we should get that message. Okay, so let's run this and see if that works. So the page should load. Look at that, webform1.aspx, and that has changed again to the URL that we are expecting. There is a query string now. Look at that, we have detected that cookies are disabled on your browser. Now let's enable cookies back. So I come here, cache, you know, for some reason these developer tools are not working correctly on my machine, uh, but let me close that. Just to make sure the cookies are enabled, I'm going to go to internet options, privacy, advanced, and okay, so that's unchecked, which means cookies are enabled. So I'm gonna click OK, close everything, run this once again. Now the cookies are enabled back on my client computer. So look at that. I type in test, test email, and the cookie should work as expected. So the cookies are working. On the other hand, I can disable cookies. Let's quickly do that. So internet options, first let's delete, uh, you know, if if any cookie that is returned to the computer, you know, let's delete that permanently. And then I want to disable cookies. How do we do that? I go to internet options, privacy, advanced, you know, override, and I want to block first party and third party cookies, click OK. And let's go to developer tools by pressing F12, go to cache, disable cookies. Now look at that. I have test and test email. Actually, let's close that now. Let's run the page once again just to make sure you know we don't have the previous traces of the cookie look at that cookies are disabled now if i type test and test email since cookies are disabled when i go to web form 2 i will not be able to retrieve anything from there so this is how we actually detect if cookies are enabled or disabled you have to write a test cookie and then try to read from that if the cookie is present cookies are enabled otherwise cookies are disabled on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.